I'm going to convert my favorite orchid into so-called water culture. I'm going to sacrifice this plant following all these instructions combined from different teachings on how to make aerial orchid roots adjust to submerged conditions. Can orchid roots survive and grow inside water? And what about this widely spread idea growing orchids as some kind of aquatic plant? I've watched ridiculous videos suggesting to grow orchids with the roots submerged into the water in a container like this. And I also saw the upside down method with leaves submerged like this to somehow improve hydration. People suggest that this method for orchids speeds up root and leaf growth and promotes the idea that orchids can thrive being inside water. Where has this insane idea of transitioning epiphytic air plants to water growing plants come from? They call it water culture orchids, or if you don't know, hydroponic orchids, which cannot be the method of submerging orchids into the water because hydroponic by definition means growing terrestrial plants without soil on air circulating substrate like perlite, gravel, or another substrate with periodic watering with nutrient solutions, which is basically exactly how orchids grow. For example, in a pot with moss or bark substrate, they are already hydroponic. And for those of my viewers who think that seven to eight mini videos are very long and they want me to just jump to the conclusion right away, I would suggest you stop now and do something else because my conclusion on this video is that orchid aerial roots will not survive inside the water. They won't grow or thrive. In nature, epiphytic orchid roots never experience conditions where they would stay submerged under water for a long time. And for those of my viewers who wish to understand the biological aspects, Please stay with me for a deeper analysis and understanding as to why growing orchids successfully with roots submerged into the water is simply not possible. After following all the instructions, completely cleaning my roots of any piece of substrate, changing the water, even drying them for a few times during the first two weeks, and now we can observe how my orchid feels as a result of this torture. Becoming paler with some bottom leaves and all the roots yellowing, some roots completely rot, losing turgor, even the part that wasn't submerged. I have to stop it now and try using my rehab method to try and save this beautiful orchid from being destroyed. I do hope it's not too late. We need to understand the specific biological mechanisms through which orchid roots function. Orchid aerial roots are exceptionally adapted to be growing in the niche where orchid attach themselves to surfaces like trees and rocks and roofs with their roots to be constantly exposed to the air. As a result, and in order to improve water and nutrient uptake, since these plants grow under severe fluctuations of these resources, orchid roots develop velamen. The velamen consists of a stratified epidermis. The velamen began with the division of protodermal cells arising from root ap apical meristem, or RAM, R-A-M. The velamen is a tissue that undergoes programmed cell death, being mature when all its cells are dead. So what do you think will happen with layers of dead velamen cells submerged into water? If you guessed it will rot, you are correct. Since the living content of the velamen radicum cells are no longer present, the cells consist of their cell walls, which are only perforated in a quite complex and specific manner. The velamen radicum therefore represents a highly porous medium with porosity on different levels. It is able to soak up atmospheric water together with dissolved nutrients, which is then available for absorption into the living cortex. In the dry state, the velamen radicum shows a whitish silvery appearance due to total reflection caused by air filling the dead cells. Upon wetting, aerial roots of orchids usually become green revealing the existence of chloroplasts inside the living cortex cells. Now imagine the velamen as a breathable clothing material, which were devised to first prevent external water from soaking the material and reaching the skin, and second to allow sweat to evaporate out of the textile. Velamen also provides evaporation of the excess water. So how is it possible underwater? Consider this, how would you feel wearing a wet shirt all the time. You would probably get sick pretty pretty quickly. 
Gas exchange is very important in order to support photosynthesis, which is taking place inside the root cortex cell. Submerging roots under the water will completely halt photosynthesis. And that explains why my orchid roots became yellow, even in the parts that weren't under the water, due to chloroplast degradation. Another important factor to consider is that orchids live as epiphytes on trees, and they have a very strong advantage of being high up in the canopy, and therefore close to or within a well-illuminated region, far away from the shady grounds of a forest. There is, however, a major problem. Usually there is no contact with the soil and therefore no supply with soil, water, and nutrients. Rather, epiphytes have to take up water directly from the atmosphere in the form of rain, mist, fog, and also dew. Different kinds of atmospheric water. So what about nutrients, especially nitrogen? The answer is that orchid velamen is indeed a place for many microorganisms to live. Velamen is home for mycorrhizal fungi, bacteria, nematodes, algae, the same way as soil microbiota is responsible for nitrogen capture and providing all the other nutrients growing plants in the soil. These symbiotic microorganisms living inside the velamen are responsible for many nutrients they provide for orchids. Look closely at how alive and moving the velamen microbiota are under a microscope. Orchid root microbiota aren't anaerobic, but they also need sufficient gas exchange, which is why so-called water-cultured orchids will never thrive. Even if the plant can manage to survive in the water for some time, it will severely suffer due to lack of nutrients. And the fact that supports the sudden growth of root hair or rhizoids than orchid roots without velamen produce root hairs to increase absorption surface, this is most likely a scream for help and not a good sign at all. Please notice that orchids normally develop root hairs as a way to attach themselves to the surface they grow on, but not for osmotic water absorption as other higher plants. In conclusion, there is no way to transition an epithetic orchid into a water growing plant. So do not fall for this idea. It is against nature and adaptive orchid biology that has been existing on our planet for millions and millions of years, and that cannot be changed in a few weeks with a jar of water.